What's up guys, in the works, and today we're going to be reviewing a card I've been using to record my PC gaming for the past month or so. And a lot of you guys ask me, you know, how do I sit down and record my gameplay? And a lot of you guys know that I used to use DX Tori, but lately you may have noticed that I've been upping the quality a little bit with my videos. I've been going up to 1080, and I, th I feel like this review is uh, something that I owe you guys, because a lot of people are curious how I get such high quality. Well... Um, DX Story is a really good program. If I was going to ever recommend something to start with, that's a good base point. But it struggles to record in anything over 720 just because you need such a fast hard drive. So I was looking for some alternatives. I saw this Avermedia Live Gamer HD card, and I really wanted to try it out. A few of my uh, buddies have it. Um, they have mixed opinions on it. You know, the firmware on this thing was a little bit sketchy at first, but they've really honed it in. You know, it's got some really solid software, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, here later on in the video. But off the bat, you know, the thing that really sold me on this card is if you look at it, look at the packaging on that. It's very, very sleek. Everything about it um, looks very professional. It slides out. And it's honestly one of the best Avermedia products I've used because I, I've used Avermedia in the past. Um, I had a capture card that actually recorded console gameplay, but this is very well packaged, and that's something that I've always re I I like about electronics. Packaging is something that I look for. You can see it's very sleek. You have that there, which is actually controls the recording. Then the actual card itself is very, very tiny, which we'll, we'll also talk about here uh, a little bit later in the video. But packaging, I give this thing an A+. And I, I know a lot of people are like, well, if you're reviewing a card, I care more about performance than packaging. But that's something that I can really sell me on a particular item. Now, uh, installation, a lot of people were saying that this was harder to install. Um, the instructions are very simplistic. It took me less than 20 seconds to get it running. You know, I popped it in there, installed the firmware. It was good to go and um, you just slide it in your PCI slot and you're good and I, one tip I will give you though is make sure it's in your first PCI slot because for some reason it didn't work for me in the others but I know a lot of you guys are like Jake get to the quality how does it record and the recording quality on this is very very solid so let's get to some gameplay footage so the quality on this card is quite high if you've watched any of my videos in the past month I've been using this card pretty exclusively to record in 1080 and that was one of the things that I didn't like about Fraps and DX Tori is the 1080 quality just wasn't there with Fraps you do see a lot of frame rate loss um, I was getting between like 40 and 60 frames with Fraps with DX Tori you don't see that same frame rate loss um, but I feel like the quality isn't as high and you really need a fast hard drive to use DX Tori and record in 1080 so that was one of the limitations of the software but the Avermedia kind of bypasses that because it does have built-in RAM it much it makes it much easier to record and not have performance dips and that's what I really was attracted to it about I mean uh, when I heard that it had built-in RAM and really made it easier to sit down and record um, I was really excited honestly because I was like hey this is the card I've been looking for it's going to make live streaming much easier it's going to make recording much easier and honestly guys it's been a, a, a godsend and it did have some issues early on there were some frame rate issues there were some problems I was having with screen tearing and that's one of the, the downsides to this particular card is screen tearing was pretty prevalent on maps that require um, a lot of information to be processed I noticed on close quarters if you watch some of my recent close quarters matches um, you can see there are there is some screen tearing and that's because you can only record in 1080 at 30 frames per second and if you have a 60 megahertz or refresh rate monitor um, you do have some problems with screen tearing and that's something that a lot of people have been complaining about with this particular card but it's something that I think Avermedia is aware of they're working on a fix so hopefully um, there will be a fix for that and honestly that's my only complaint on the quality now um, with the recording itself, you do only have one codec option, which is H.264, uh, which is what I've always used, even when I was recording on Macs and PC, or when I was using my Mac before I got my PC, I even use H.264. Um, so there are some limitations in that, but you do get to pick the bit rate. There's a lot of options in that. Um, but the quality on this card is super high. I can give it, I can give it a B plus once they get the uh, screen tearing issue fixed on that. But I really do enjoy it. It's a much better alternative to DX Tori in terms of quality. So the software portion of this particular card is actually quite intuitive and it's actually a large improvement over past Avermedia software because on my old capture card the software was not very convenient at all but you can see there's several options to choose from here and you can actually record your audio too if you want to do some sort of live commentary or have your audio and luckily it actually saves it as a separate mp3 file which is something that I really appreciate because it makes working on video and audio much easier if you've ever recorded a live commentary you kind of have an idea of 
what I'm talking about. But you can see that you only get one choice in codec, which is H.264. You can change the bitrate, you can change the resolution, but if you do 1080, like I said, you are limited to 30 frames per second. So that is kind of a bummer, um, but it's not something that I've really had a problem with. Now, you can set your hotkey for anything. There's no issues there. Now, the live streaming feature of this particular card is probably something that a lot of people are wondering about because the built-in RAM does make it really easy. Um, it actually comes with software that you can uh, actually stream from the card itself. You don't need to use XSplit or anything like that. But one of the cool things about it is it's actually optimized to use XSplit and comes with a three-month trial if you're interested in live streaming. For, so for live streaming, it is very, very effective. One of the issues I have had with it, though, is with live streaming, if you have dual monitors sometimes you have to reset the stream because the card will actually crash that's something else that they are working on I have faith that they will get it fixed but far as being a good live streaming platform it definitely does do that and I would say this software is pretty good so um, I was actually pleasantly surprised with how well the software worked so now that we've talked about the nitty-gritty technical side of things you're probably asking yourself Jake, do you like this card? Is it worth the price? Now, I will say this is a quite pricey card. It, depending on where you get it from, it's going to be between $200 and $250. I've seen it go for more. I've seen it go for less. It really just depends on which website and if you catch a good sale. So it is pretty expensive. So um, the performance is expected to be top-notch when you're paying that much because that is a the price of a high-end graphics card. But like I said, it does have built-in RAM. And built-in RAM makes it much easier on your PC when you're recording, when you're live streaming. So I I think if you are wanting to break into the YouTube scene, if you're wanting to record your PC gameplay and live stream at the same time, I think this offers the best bang for your buck. It's a very versatile uh, capture device and it makes it much easier on you. You can get some high frame rate, you can play at the um, highest potential, and it's really good for demanding games like Planet Side 2. Battlefield 3, you know, Bad Company Vietnam, all those high demanding games. Um, it does a really good job with those. And you can see we're playing some Vietnam here, and it's pretty smooth. So the screen tearing issue that I did mention takes some a while to kind of get the kinks out. I have a GTX 680, uh, which is a pretty high-end card. I don't think you can get any more high-end than that. But um, it, I did have some screen tearing issues with it because, like I said, you're if you're capturing in 1080, you're only getting 30 frames per second. And it seemed like it couldn't keep up with my capture card, and that's something that Avermedia Media is working on. Now, um, I don't want to act like there's no negatives to this card because there are some downsides that I have had. If you want audio, you actually have to plug your audio from your sound card into the actual capture card to capture audio, then plug either your speakers or headset into the capture card itself. Now, if you're like me and you rotate between speakers and your headset, that can become a huge pain in the butt. So that's one of the things that's kind of bothered me here uh, with the card the past couple of months. So Oftentimes, if you notice I don't have audio in a particular video, it's because I was too lazy to plug my headset into it um, and we didn't get audio because of that. So that's one of the things that kind of bums me out about it. Like if you want to plug it into your front audio port, um, you can't do that. So um, I do like the ability, though, that you can record in a separate MP3 file if you're doing a live commentary or something like that because that much, it makes it much easier to work with the footage you have. But overall, I definitely think this is a good value. Um, Avro Media is really supporting the card. They're still doing things with it. They're still trying to make it better, releasing firmware updates and stuff like that. And I think the software is very solid. So if you're going wanting to stream and record gameplay, um, I think that it's definitely a solid buy. I think if you're not really that big in the streaming, you might want to look into the other softwares. Uh, but it's definitely a good value. I think it's definitely the best card on the market that does this. There's a couple more um, that I, I've looked into, and I think this one is definitely the best. So overall, a solid experience. Um, I'm going to link it in the description so you can read some more about it, get some more details about it to the official website and stuff like that. But um, overall, pretty satisfied with my with my purchase, and I, I definitely think that I would buy more Avermedia products in the future. But I'll see you guys next time. Peace.